Hello and welcome to another episode of What's Your Side Hustle on Ellen Hop. My name is Dr. Sarah Chidiberi Jo. Today we're having an interesting conversation with someone I consider really interesting. His name is Chukuka Osabiku Daniel. Chuka, you're welcome. Thank you, Dr. Sarah. Okay, good to see you here. Yeah. Uh, but what does it feel like? Usually you're behind the camera today. Yeah, I have to say it's very weird and very uncomfortable, but I have to be <laughs> relaxed and comfortable, so yeah. I get it. It's important that we share with the world what you do. Yeah. I find you very interesting um, because of the amazing things that you do on the side. And that's what we want to share with the world today. Okay. So tell me, you're a student. Yeah. Student yes. at River State University, Mass Communication, 300 level, you're entry 400 finally. level. Congratulations yeah, thank on you, that. Ma. Thank you. Um, so high school been generally? Well, school has been interesting because I've gotten to meet really, really interesting people like you, so many other people as well. School has been stressful, but most of all, it has been very, very enlightening. It has opened me to opportunities, opened me to experiences that I don't think I'll have gotten um, any place else. Okay. Yeah. Um, so today we want to find out some of the things that you do on the side. Being a student, I know, is a full-time task. Yeah can be tasking very tasking um, and challenging depending on what school and the course you're doing mass communication is quite yeah. intense yeah. i know that i teach that so i know that but tell us what else do you do um apart from being a student i do voiceovers and other freelance jobs on the side okay. um i play instruments in my church i sing in my church as well and yeah i i just exist and be a nice person to people. <laughs> I think you're underselling yourself. But anyway, we'll get to that. But tell me about the voiceover experience. How did you get into that? Um, I got into voiceovers in year one. Wow. Yeah, when we came into school, um, some people told us that there's a studio in school okay. and that we should go to the studio and get engaged. That was the word they said, find yourself doing something. So I went to the studio the first day. I met the manager at that time. And he was like, just come around, you find something to do. I had no idea what I was going to do at the studio. Uh, I went there for like two months straight. I, I would just go to the studio, sit down, and just greet everybody. Hi, how are you? My name is Chuka. How are you? My name is Chuka. I didn't have anything to do. Okay. So one particular day, I met a guy, Ogochuku. And Ogochuku was like, I like your voice, and yet I think you can do voiceover. I'm like, boss, I don't know what's in your voiceover. What's this, <laughs> <laughs> what's this voiceover? Oh. And he introduced me to voiceovers. He showed me some stuff. Started practicing and yeah, I did my first job for 2K for a church at that, that time and it was it was quite impressive because it was my first try hmm. and it was impressive how well I did. So yeah, that's how voiceover started for me from year one till now and I've done so many things. I've worked for international brands, I've worked for churches, I've worked for NGOs, I've worked for so many companies, Port Harcourt and around Nigeria and the world. Good. Yeah. That's really, really remarkable. You're still in school and you're doing all this amazing, yeah. including working for international brands. I'm yeah. really interested in, in that one. How did you get into the scene? Okay, so the internet is there, obviously. Okay. And I was curious to find out because Nigerian markets for voiceovers and other things, and it's not really as encouraging as international markets. So I went online to look for other opportunities. I found out there's freelance websites you can sign up to as a voice talent and get jobs. So I signed up to a couple of them, but the first international job I got was not from the website store. It was from someone I knew here in Pohakot. So he's based in the UK. Okay. So he got me to work for a podcast for him. I would edit the podcast. Then he introduced me to one of his friends. And I didn't know she was a voice talent as well. We were supposed to work on something entirely different. So whilst we were having our conversation, she, she mentioned that she does voiceovers. I said, oh, I do voiceovers as well. Can we work together? And she's in the UK. So she gave me a couple of jobs I did for her. And yeah, that's how I started getting jobs through her. I've done for some animations, I've wow. done for some external videos. And yeah, it opened up to more opportunities as well. Okay, we'll talk about some of the other things that I know that you do and do so well and how your, your ability to learn mm -hmm. and just throw yourself out there, take on new challenges and really excel at them, including manning the camera, doing videos, um, we'll editing, photographs, we'll talk about <laughs> that, yes. Uh, but tell me now, what's your reaction therefore to students who mass communication like yourself yeah. who look at the cause and feel that it's boring they can't really see a future there what's the difference um because you're already making money off this yeah yeah um well i would say it's, it's how they got into school in the first place yeah because if you came into school you wanted to do law they can't give you mass com you 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 have like enthusiasm to want to learn and do stuff 
But if you came into school with the mindset that I came to do mass communication and I came to get everything I can get out of mass communication, then when you see opportunities, um, you will not take them as um, likely or you will not see them as something that's small. Also, if you understand that you have to start living your life now, okay. you, can't, you, you, sh you shouldn't wait till like after school or years after school. Start living your life now. Every opportunity you see and you can excel at it, take it up and start working at it. I'm really, again, yeah. super impressed by what you've just said. Start living your life today. We're yeah. going to take a short pause. When we come back, we'll continue. Awesome. Welcome back. This is still What's Your Side Hustle on Ellen Hogg. And Chuka is here. He's telling us about what he does on the side. Apart from being a student, he's a voice of artists. Um, he's worked locally and internationally. But now we're going to find out the other things that Chuka does because this man here is loaded. Uh -huh. Tell us. What else do you have in your arsenal? Okay, there's something I didn't mention. Okay. Did you mention it, I think? Yes. Cameras. Yes. So, my, my journey with cameras started with my phone. Okay. Um, I used to take pictures of the sunset a lot. If you follow me on Instagram or my WhatsApp, you see lots of sunset pictures. Um, when I met Dr. Sarah, she told me about Ella Hub, and I said, okay, cool. What can I, she said, what can you do for Ella Hub? I remember. And I said, ah, now voiceover, you do not. let me do voiceover. So I did the first voiceover and she was really impressed. And we realized that we have some cameras at home and we can shoot with them. Yes. I said, okay, cool. Let me try my hand at this video thing yeah. and we started shooting some videos and if you've been following the channel i'm sure that you can see how we've progressed from the first video we shot <laughs> <laughs> to this video yeah. so yeah um um i do video editing for ella hub first of all i'm still honing my skills so if you want to work with us you can come speak to her yeah. and we can talk about it later awesome i love the fact that every one of us here we're learning we're getting yeah. better but i'm really interested and i'm really excited about the days where we're going to start training people yeah, teaching them sharing are you excited about those yeah, days yeah, as yeah. Well? about yeah. training i'm actually going to do a voiceover training next year okay because lots of people have met me to learn voiceover and it's stressful to should this person something, should this person something, should this person something. Why not get everybody together, let them pay a fee and load them with stuff. But that will be something in okay. the future. Much better looking. <laughs> Just remember, voiceover training, camera, editing, all of that coming on Ellen Hub. Yeah. Don't lose out. Stay there. Yeah. Okay, so um, Chuka is also a man of faith. And I want to talk about your faith a little bit okay. and then tell us about your amazing project, Kindle. Okay, um, where do we start from? Um, let me start from where school started. So, okay. I was to study law as an art student. Like most? Yeah, like all art students. <laughs> you're good at government literature, you're mm. a law student. So I didn't really think about what I wanted to do with my life um, academically. So I wrote jam first time, I wrote jam second time. So it was on the third try, I hadn't prayed about it. If you're a young person getting into school, pray about what you want to study before you start going into school. So I was walking on the road, I was praying like, God, what's up? What do we, what should I study? What do you want me, do you want me to study? And he said I should do mascom. And I had never thought about doing mascom before ever. So mm -hmm. I was like, okay, this has to be God because my mind never go mascom before. So I applied for mascom, I got into school. And as a young person that loves Jesus Christ, and you find yourself amongst other young people, you want to um, express Jesus Christ, you want to show them about Jesus. So, at first, it wasn't easy, first, well, first semester of school, because that was when I was trying to figure out my bearing with school, voiceovers, radio station, studio, and all of that. But I was trying my best to um, express who I am within like my circle. So if you were close to the other time, you know that, okay, this person is different and he has something unique about him. So I've always had the vision or the dream or idea to hold meetings, um, music meetings for young people, just get them to come together, tell them about Jesus Christ, the love of God and all of that. But I had not really taken it to work, to work on it. So um, before COVID, I was to do a meeting, um, I was to do a, an event and we were thinking of names, I should we call it Awakening, this one, that one, that one, that one, just thinking of so many stuff and we, 
I, I thought of using awakening or the awakening, but it was generic. Everybody has the awakening somewhere. So, okay, the idea of this meeting is to start up something in people's minds or hearts, and let's call it Kindle. So, hmm. Kindle came about. So, the idea of Kindle was to start up a fire in the hearts of young people to love God, to go after God, and all of that. So, we had our first Kindle meeting in 2019, or no, early 2020, February, February 2020. And that one, we addressed um, mediocrity identity, purpose, and all of those issues that young people face typically um, okay. in society. We had, it was a three-day event on WhatsApp. We had Pastor Victor, Milton Tutu, myself, and a couple of others. And it was really insightful because we had two WhatsApp group, groups running. Okay. We made the first group on Sunday night. And by Monday morning in school, my friends are calling me like, yo, the group is full, we need to open another group. Oh, wow. Yeah. So when we opened another group, it was full again. I was like, okay, this is the end. Because if we keep opening more groups, we will not be able to be accountable and to be a problem. So we had two WhatsApp groups running. That was like 300 to 400 young people hmm. that were listening to the word of God. And that has to be the most, or one of the most important steps I've taken in my life. Wow. Because God has been giving me the push, like, do this thing, do this thing. I feel like, what should I tell them? How do I tell them? What do I know? But once I took that step and I opened my mouth to start speaking and the, and the guests started speaking, I could see that God yeah, has been so waiting. So this was before the main kingdom yeah, event yeah, yeah, is here. Yeah. Oh, wow. I could see that God, ha God had been waiting for me to just take this step. And there were testimonies. I know people that reached out to me then that I still talk to now. And I can see the difference in their lives mm -hmm. from when the event started. So COVID-19 happened and... We all know that during COVID, lots of things happened to young people. Mm. People were not praying as much as they used to be. Depression came in Depression and all of stuff. So oh. people were really cold. And God said, do another Kindle event. And in my mind, I was like, which kind of wahala be this? Because <laughs> I'm not ready. I don't know what to do. And I was like, just tell them about addiction and depression. So I had not I had experience with addiction because I was addicted to stuff when I was younger and God has helped me through. Mm. But for depression, I was not really in tune with what depression is because I've not experienced it before. So for um, after Kindle, that period till early 2021, I had a, um, a feel okay. of what depression oh, is. Man. So it, it helps me to know how to address these people. So for this second WhatsApp event, it was more personal because we didn't want it to be as loud as that one so we put in so many protocols before you could um sign up okay. so people were really really if you're coming you're really intentional like i want to do this program so we had people come in we had testimonies as well and yeah that one happened the last kindle event we had november 12 2021 um god had told me already that we're going to do a live event okay. and i was really scared because if i was scared of doing just whatsapp events imagine how i'm scared to do a live event mm -hmm. And he had already told me the guest he wants us to have that event, he told me everything. I was just stalling. I was just stalling. I was just stalling. When the event was coming closer, the pressure to do it was God was month more pressure on me. And I said, okay, cool, let's do it. We picked a date. We went to the venue. We spoke to the guys, how much this one down down. We negotiated. We made the design, started posting, we are not paying for the haul or anything. Because <laughs> <laughs> we didn't have money. I, I have money, Shabo, we didn't have money. So we just started posting, we started doing publicity, telling people, going around two weeks with events. It was like nothing was going to happen. There was problems coming from here and there, from, from people around church and all of that. But I did not pay attention to them because I know what God wants me to do. Okay. And I know why we have to do it. But long story short, oh, I didn't mention Eden. Okay. Yeah. Eden was um, um, a series of meetings we did in school as a build up to Kindle. To Kindle. Yeah. And in Eden, things happened that I had, I've never experienced before. So, first of all, we've had, we had also healed at Eden. Wow. We had um, um, depression. We had people literally say that they feel relieved in their mind wow. yeah, after attending Eden meetings. We had people go with comic pain, their bellies aching them and stuff pray for you, as you're praying for this person, this person is getting healed. It was just so spontaneous and so cool. So that gave me some push, like, okay, cool. If this can happen as Eden, let's push it to have Outside. Yeah, as Kindle. So when the main Kindle events came, um, we were able to pay for the hall, I think three, a week to the event, paid for sound, paid for lights, paid for all the instruments, everything was on 
point. Awesome. We got all our guests. The the caliber of people that ministered at Kindle, if I were to pay them with their actual fees, it would run into millions because these are oh, like, is that fantastic? Yeah, these are these are people that are really good at their craft. And my friends was like, guy, how you take bringing people together? Like, bro, it's not me, it's God, man. I just speak to them and since we are friends, like, cool, I'll do it for you. And they came together. We had Martin Sticky, we had Mr. Dera. The silent poets, messengers, so many people, so many people. Oh, long story short, Kindle came. <laughs> I like the way you say long story yeah, short. Yeah, Kindle came, <laughs> Kindle happened, and we had testimonies. We had testimonies. Great, we had testimonies. great. So but tell me, for someone who is engaged in a very secular world, how do you balance both your faith mm. and your practice? Oh, okay. How are you navigating um, that? It's the mindset I have. Because okay. I, I know that God wants to reach out to people out there. Yeah. And there's no way you can reach out to people out there without you going out there. Yeah. So I see myself as a catalyst, like as a change agent. That If I'm not there, how would this person know about the love of God? So I may not put it in your face that I did preach for you, you're a sinner. No, I may not do that. I don't even do that, Seth. I just live my life and try to express Jesus Christ. So we, you can see that there's something different about this person. You're interested in wanting to know what is this thing about you mm -hmm. and i've got to your heart and i can speak to you and that's how it happens beautiful i yeah. love the fact that young people are responding to this call that you have yeah. um and i hope that in the future much more from kindle give us an insight into your future what do you see in the next five ten years what do you project for chuka okay first of all um i'm going to take this freelance thing in much higher because as i said before i want to have a life i see a life for myself where everything i do expresses jesus christ so if i'm doing voiceovers i'm taking pictures i'm doing video doing broadcasting whatever it is i want people to just have a touch of jesus in it okay. also i see um, us doing more kindle events very important i see us doing more kindle events because uh, we have to collaborate with more people get uh, more people involved reach out to more people as well and also also, small tip, I'll be going into fashion. Oh, yeah. I didn't see that one coming. I would just, up? yeah, I'll be So tell us about this fashion, why um, and uh, okay. what exactly? Yeah, will you be making dresses? Will you be designing? Will you be um, showing people like styles? What exactly are you doing? I'll be doing all of them. Okay. So as part of the ministry to reach out to young people, mm -hmm. young people like fashion. Did is you? what? What do you like fashion? And one of the ways to reach out to people is by um, coming like with bait, with what they like, what they're interested in. Mm -hmm. So if you can get that opening, you can get into their hearts. So I'm personally, I like fashion as well. I like, I have this thing for 80s, 90s aesthetic. So mm, yeah. that vintage feel. So I want to make clothes. I'm going to do the styling. I'm going to do graphic t-shirts. It's all going to be faith-based. Okay. So we're going to just drop some hints of Jesus Christ, some scriptures some pop culture references, things that young people like, infuse it together, get it close to them, and yeah. Awesome. Um, so it's not just about your faith and the Kindle project, you're also thinking about fashion. That's a, it's a lot of things you're handling. Yeah. Which one do you really think is cut out for you? Cut out for me? Yeah. Is the Kindle owner. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it's the ministry owner. So do we see a pastor true kind of works? <laughs> I, can't, I can't say yet. I can't say yet. But Why do people see, refer to you as Arrow Pastor? Well, that term <laughs> came pastor. from my classmates, okay. Chikwado, Success. I don't know, yeah. they just call me Arrow Pastor because um, if you see a person that's supposedly a really, really Christian person, they have this demeanor of big trousers. Okay, I wear big trousers, but you know what I mean now? Like okay. Bible, fire. I don't have that demeanor. You don't even know, but. There's just something different about me. So I think that's why they called me a real pastor because I was able to roll with them okay. that were not Christian Christian. And I was able to roll with the Christian Christian people and make everyone feel at home with me. So that's why they called me a real pastor. Yeah, okay, so we'll sign up with this one. <laughs> Meet your Aaron pastor. His future is surrounded uh, around the subject of faith. And I appreciate that. We need more of that in the yeah. world. We respect that. But then there's also the artist, there's also the voiceovering, there's also the video and the yeah. camera and the train, the future for you. That's a lot to handle, like I said yeah. earlier. But we appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mom. Thank you. In I front really of the appreciate. camera, Ellen Hub. Thank, Thank you guys so for watching as well. Okay. Um, remember to follow Ellen Hub on all platforms Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, everywhere you find us, please engage. And of course, there's a website 